edition of Brown's Full As Is with A for Shauna, S for Sonia, and Ashana, I am so excited today because we get to finally start doing in-person events again. It's time. It is it's time. time. Yeah. And actually our event, the Hatchy Bird Fest, mm -hmm. hence we're on the Hatchy National Wildlife That's Refuge right. today. Right. It's going to be kind of a hybrid event. We're going to do some virtual, some in person. Right. But it's just, just really exciting to be back out and being able to be around people that's right and it's really good for us to be able to be outdoors here uh around the wildlife refuge mm -hmm. that's really with some of our feathered friends and our bird expert we affectionately call him birder <laughs> bob uh bob ford who is our area bird expert mm -hmm. and a great partner with the hatchy bird fest we could not do it without him so I'm really excited to talk with him. Yes. Do you think we're ready? We're ready. Y'all come on. Uh, Birdfest got started nine years ago. This is our ninth one uh, to implement. It was started with a suggestion from a friend to the Delta Heritage Center here, Sonia specifically, that bird watching is ecotourism. It's big money and it attracts a lot of people to a lot of places. Uh, that may sound a, lot, a little unusual to a lot of people, but you know, bird watchers uh, are a very active group. It's one of the fastest growing outdoor recreation sports in the country. Uh, millions of dollars are spent on travel to go bird watching on bird feeders, bird seed, binoculars, cameras, etc. And we thought that people would be attracted here to, uh, to the Hatchie River, the uniqueness of the Hatchie River and Brownsville Haywood County. I grew up duck hunting with my father. Uh, he was an avid duck hunter after World War II, grew up in Memphis, and so my father would take me duck hunting him with him starting at oh, probably four years old. And he was one of those people who could identify a duck at what seemed to me like a mile away. And so he taught me how to identify ducks, and I got pretty good at ducks, and I really loved uh, outdoors, and so when I got to my teens, I linked up with some bird watchers in Memphis, the Tennessee Ornithological Society, and they really helped open my eyes to all the other birds out there, and I began to identify other birds, and then I went to college and got uh, degrees in wildlife biology with an emphasis on, on bird conservation. Bird conservation is important uh, for lots of different reasons. It's important for personal reasons, it's, it's good healthy exercise, it's good to be outdoors. The identification of birds helps your mind work much like a puzzle does. Birds are also considered, though, uh, indicators, indicators of the environment around us. And as we watch birds, if birds get in trouble, we're not far behind as humans. Uh, birds can indicate poor water quality, they can indicate uh, air pollution, they indicate uh, a breakdown in our natural world, the ecosystem integrity, or the loss of biological diversity, and all those things uh, feed our economy and feed our lives in ways that sometimes we don't always recognize, but are very important ways. You know, uh, you don't have to be an expert to be an active part of playing a role in conservation. Uh, I tell people first and foremost, enjoy birds, enjoy being outdoors. And even beginners, I say, don't even worry about the name because people will always say, well, what's that bird's name? It's like, well, that's important, but just watch what it does. Just enjoy the behavior. Just enjoy, you know, watching a bird build a nest or watching a bird uh, do its thing. As that interest grows, uh, you become aware of what's around locally and conservation of those things locally are a, are a natural extension of of wanting to know more about birds and trees and wanting to uh, be active. And in the winter, uh, there's tens of thousands of waterfowl in the county and there's lots of different species like mallards and Canada geese and white-fronted geese and pintails. But now, like we are here in the spring, the waterfowl left about a month ago, three weeks ago, and now the other birds are starting to show up that have migrated south for the winter. So all the birds that uh, come through here, uh, even all the, all the way to Canada, 
are going to be here in the spring. And those are like the warblers, the fly catchers, the tanagers, forest and field, grassland, songbirds are a lot of them. One bird in particular is called a Swainson's warbler, and it's a very secretive bird actually, and it likes these bottomland hardwood floodplain forests just like we have here in Haywood County. And it likes the thick brush, and it likes to stay way back in the thick brush. And so there's only a few places in Tennessee where it can be seen pretty easily, and this is one of those places. At BirdFest, we sometimes get uh, photographers, for example, who have got pictures of tons of other birds but don't have a Swainson's warbler, so they'll come and try to get a picture here, and are usually successful. Uh, Friday night of, of this year's BirdFest 2021, April 23rd, we start with, uh, as, is, as I think is wonderful for this part of the world, we start with local music and original music. And once again, we'll have Bob Rains and the Dark Pilgrims here at the Heritage Center. It's a virtual event, so you get to watch um, Bob and the band play some original music for about four from about 4.30 to 5.00. Uh, and should be a good time there. Then we'll introduce our speaker for the evening, our Friday night speaker. It's Richard Crossley and Holly Merker. They've just co-authored a book called Ornotherapy. It's a book that describes the importance of bird watching and, and study of birds by any of us for very personal reasons. It's good for our health, it's good for our mind, and it's good for our, our spirit to, to relax and, and to watch birds. They'll delve into some of the science behind that and some personal experience as well. That event is hosted by World Migratory Bird Day. We're one of the World Migratory Bird Day festivals that they uh, list and pay attention to. But as a result, people will need to register beforehand in order to see that uh, uh, presentation by Richard and Holly. I should mention too, Richard is a world-renowned uh, author of field guides. He's got a unique field guide series out called the Crossley Field Guides. Uh, in person this year will start on Saturday morning, April 24th, with a hike. Uh, we will meet at the Delta Heritage Center and go in a couple of different groups. Because of COVID and still recognizing the need to be careful, we'll caravan everyone to their own car. Uh, when we get out of the car to go bird watching, we ask that you keep a social distance and if you're comfortable wearing a mask, uh, that's great. If you're not, then be sure to keep that social distance while we're out. But we'll still have plenty of interaction about what birds we see. Over the course of the weekend, um, we see about, uh, well, not everybody sees every bird, but for all people, when we total the list, it's usually over 100 different kinds of species. Saturday night this year, we have um, an in-person event. We've had it every year. It's become one of our most popular events. The refuge uh, gates will be open Saturday evening for people to stay in their family units, family groups, uh, walk around the lake and see how the lake looks at sunrise, sunset and a little bit afterwards. And that's a unique opportunity. Usually the gate closes right at sunset. One of the more fun hikes that I do is completely virtual. It's a forest ecology walk. I just basically pick a track of woods in the Hatchie Refuge and just kind of walk at random and talk about how ecological interactions work in a forest and how birds respond to those inter interactions. On Sunday afternoon at four o'clock, we have a very special treat. The, uh, one of the leaders in the Bluebird Society, uh, Don Hazel, will join us. He'll tell us everything you need to know about bluebirds. Hatchie Bird Fest is for everybody. I can't emphasize that enough. Geared towards people of all levels of expertise and even interest for enjoyment. Uh, if you're an avid birder, I think you could go out and find a big list of birds this time of year and migrants and find some unusual birds. If you're a photographer, O'Neill Lake and other places offer great opportunity to take uh, world-class pictures of birds. If you're a beginner, that is perfect. That's really who this festival has always been geared for. If, if you know nothing about birds or if you know just a little bit about birds, we like to take time to watch the common species as well. Well, Sonia, Bobby.
is so knowledgeable about everything birds, about the hatchie. Yes. Uh, it's always a pleasure to listen to him talk and to hear him share his knowledge. That's right. Such a jewel he is, uh, and we're so fortunate to have him in our community. We are. We are. Yeah. So, Bird Fest. This weekend, April 23rd through 25th, all the events in person will start at the Delta Heritage Center. And then, of course, our virtual events will be on Facebook and Zoom. Go to our website, HatchieBirdFest.com. Mm -hmm. We've got so much going on. Yes. BirdFest, Murder Mystery, and more. That's right. You have a Murder That's Mystery right. coming up. Murder in black and white. At the yeah. end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until then. Until then. All right. Goodbye, y'all.